Hi, my name is Andromeda, my pronouns are she, they, and today we'll be talking about the queer literature and art of Germany's Weimar era. Romanticism was a part of much of the art and literature that appeared in the homosexual magazines. In the photographs and short stories published in the friendship press of the 1920s, many authors saw the countryside as a space for refuge, relaxation, and sexual discovery. In particular, a large number of the stories in the lesbian press use natural settings. These stories could be seen as a firm rejection of the identification between homosexuality and modernity made by many moralizing figures at the time. Most commonly, the characters are presented as fleeing the city, with its noise and monotonous daily routine. In more natural settings, they feel themselves to be understood and accepted, said Heike Schader in her study of German lesbian magazines, Virility, Vamps, and Wild Violets. Escape from the routine and social conventions of civilization allowed for new pleasures to be discovered, new forms of self to be explored, and new kinds of relationships to be established. Additionally, this period saw the rise of sentimentality to ancient Grecian and Roman times, with many artists taking on inspiration from the classic tragedies of these eras. Homosexual connections to the more permissive sexual freedoms and homoeroticism of ancient Greece only increased the use of this inspiration in queer literature. Since tragedies were common in Grecian and Roman works, and in Romantic literature, tragic endings tended to overshadow a large part of fiction dealing with homosexuality at this time. Death and suicide were also useful for driving home the social criticism intended by the author. Tragic conclusions generate pathos, and in many of these works, death highlights the human dimension of simply living with emotions that are not widely shared. Part of much romantic art and literature was a critique of the controlling and stifling tendencies of society. Such a critique was central to the most famous lesbian film of the Weimar era, Girls in Uniform, released in 1931. The film tells the story of a sensitive young girl named Manuela von Meinhardis, who is sent off to a boarding school. The atmosphere there is oppressive. Much of the film focuses on the relationship which develops between Manuela and an attractive, sympathetic teacher. She eventually confesses her love for her teacher in front of the entire school, the headmistress cracks down on her and forbids anyone else to talk to her. In the original version, a play called Yesterday and Today, performed in Berlin in 1931, and written by the German-Hungarian writer Krista Winslow, who is in the process of coming out as a lesbian, Manuela throws herself down a staircase at the end of the production killing herself. In the film version, she is narrowly saved by her schoolmates, but the effect of the near suicide can be felt. While a critique of Prussian authoritarianism, it is also very much a lesbian film. In the play, the teacher was played by Margaret Metzler, described as a real butch type by the actress playing Manuela in the film. 
Additionally, within the film, there are shots of girls lying together in bed, bathed in light, that suggests romance. And another scene, which lingers on the kisses that the teacher gives to the girls, as she wishes them good night. Finally, there is the pronouncement made by the teacher after the suicide attempt. What you call sins, I call the great spirit of love, which has a thousand forms. At this time, several writers began to construct a kind of ancestral gallery of honorary homosexuals that included ancient figures alongside more modern nobles and artists. They presented homosexual biographies of King Edward II of England, King Frederick the Great of Prussia, King Magnus Eriksson, and Queen Christina of Sweden, and the Duchess Louise Dorothea of Saxony and Gotha. They also published discussions of the life and work of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Piotr Chiavosky, Oscar Wilde, and Hans Christian Andersen. Many of the magazines also discussed foreign literature that might not have been easily accessible to German speakers, and compiled lists of books that might be of interest to homosexual readers, essentially establishing a queer literary canon. Thus, tragic endings and romanticism infused much of the art and literature of the era, and a queer literary canon began to be established. Next time, We'll discuss debates about queer terminology at the time, and the importance of this terminology in dictating a homosexual identity. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have learned some valuable queer history, and I'll see you all in the next video.